Hi, my name's Peter Coffin, and I can't help but be an American idiot. <laughs> Gonna employ some cutting so that that happens quicker than it happened. <laughs> so happy New Year, everybody! It's 2024. Uh, this, uh, I think, New Year's Rock and Eve, Ryan Seacrest's thing used to be Dick Clark's thing. You know, Happy New Year and all that. Green Day was on and did American Idiot because why wouldn't they? American Idiot is a great song. And rather than get myself a nice copyright claim to deal with for the next 30 days, I decided, hey, I'll just summarize it for you real quick. Instead of saying, I'm not a part of the redneck agenda, uh, Billy Joe Armstrong said, I'm not a part of the MAGA agenda. And oh my lordy lord, that made some folks mad. It's all over social media this morning, guys. It's all, all Green Day all the time. <laughs> Now, I wanted to talk about this because I kind of hate partisanship. What we have here is Green Day ultimately alienating a large part of the population they're allegedly singing about making the world better for. But I'm not calling out Green Day here because I think that's stupid. In fact, all the people calling out Green Day, they're people who are acting like they didn't know what Green Day was about. Like when American Idiot first came out, it was kind of a response to 9-11 particularly to the Bush administration in the 2003 war in Iraq. Like, they went from being kind of a punky alternative band in the 1990s to when they released this album being just a really blatantly anti-conservative band. They were taking on the mantle of real punk, which is anti-establishment punk, uh, and it gave them, I think, their biggest album they've ever made. Made a lot of money for a lot of people who aren't just in the band Green Day. Now, a lot of executives and shareholders also made a lot of money off of it. But this is Green Day's brand. If you know who Green Day is, there's very little chance that you think they're conservative. And, 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 and I'll show you an example. Um, the Citizen Free Press said Green Day singer Billy Joe Armstrong altered the song lyrics to American Idiot, confirming he's not a punk rocker, but just another tired, listless vessel for the corporate political agenda. Now here's the point where all of the MAGA communists will say the revolutionary potential in America is in the MAGA. Therefore, we have to figure out how to talk to those people. You're not completely wrong. Like, the MAGA people are tired of the corporate political agenda, but they're only tired of it because they think of it as woke. The thing is, anti-woke is equally as corporate, as owned by the bourgeoisie, as woke is. I wrote a book called Woke Ouroboros. It is criticizing the woke ideology as corporate and as a means to justify capitalism uh, currently. Wokeness is exactly what these folks say it is. However, they're approaching it from a consumer standpoint. That is to say there is a market of lifestyle choices one can make and their choice is not woke. The opposite of woke, the other offering, what products are there for me, the anti-woke person? MAGA. MAGA must mean anti-corporate agenda, right? Well, no. MAGA doesn't even mean anti the agenda that MAGA hates, which is the WEF uh, finance capital agenda, which, yeah, I get why they hate it, but they don't understand it, and therefore they support it every single time all they say is that we need different people in charge. We need the good elites, the ones that care about the thing that I care about, and there, that is the problem. They don't want to change how things work, they want to change who's in charge because they want them to have different priorities, and that is dumb. Uh, just about as dumb as liberals who support the Green Day thing like this. My jaw dropped, and then I laughed. That laugh of, did I just hear that? Good for him and the band. I imagine the show producers and some sponsors weren't happy. Now, Fred very accidentally gets closer to what is correct, while also being infuriating. First off, the popular ideology amongst the show producers and sponsors is definitely not MAGA. Right now, anyway. We'll see once they've handled this cycle of the imperialist crisis, but uh, for now, they don't like that one. 
Like, it's astounding to me that Fred here thinks this is something that would bother the people who are in charge of most television today. But he says some, and that's that's kind of the key to how he's closer to right. There are factions in the ruling class, and ultimately, they're kind of just at war over which ideology they think better justifies their rule in a manner that will keep the plebs' mouths shut and the buildings not burnt down. I'm sure that Green Day thinks that they're being anti-establishment. I mean, at this point, they've had nothing but reinforcement for decades on that idea. So I don't really have as much of a problem with them. But I do kind of want to take this opportunity to talk about MAGA communism. Um, the underlying idea of wanting to bring the proletariat, which often supports MAGA, often is in industrial jobs, farming, trucking, etc., wanting to bring those people class consciousness uh, is a good idea. But I'll tell you that that is the least productive brand ever. MAGA and communism are two words that create this kind of reaction. I'm usually pretty straightforward about being a communist, but I usually don't say like, Hi, my name is Peter Coffin. I'm a fucking communist. I have my kids' drawings up there. I have some art over there that you can't see. Um, I don't just have like a ton of political theory up there. I've got like Steve Harvey's jump. I don't hate Mr. Beast's videos. If you actually watch them, they're, they're pretty good. There's some certain aesthetic stuff about it, usually at the start, that you got to get past. But once you're past that, they're pretty all right. This person is going to do this thing, and if they can, I'm going to give them $100,000. But wait, there's going to be a catch. Watch till the end and see what happens. Yeah, I have to ignore that part. Uh, but once you do, they're, they're pretty fun, actually. My point is that MAGA is an extreme partisan brand that pisses people off. Just like communism, and I'm not saying the kind of communism I'm pushing, but just the word communism, the brand communism. Uh, it does the same thing. People hate communism in the same way they hate MAGA. Because in their eyes, it's an extreme political brand. So it's two very extreme political brands that both have extremely large hate followings and tiny tiny slices of people that will tolerate both of those. In other words, it's a real, I'm very unique brand to be a MAGA communist. And rather than creating similarity, MAGA communism does the exact same thing that LGBTQ does, which is it draws lines. It draws separation. It draws comparison. Rather than form one coherent thing, it instead takes multiple things and just acts like they're one thing. It's actually a very individualist way of looking at things, and ultimately MAGA communists seem more obsessed with the Gramscian culture war bullshit than materialism of any kind anyways, so who really gives a shit? Why am I talking about this? Because it relates hard to this. Green Day is just signaling. They're telling their audience who they want to be their fans. I don't know if they know they're doing this. They probably do to some extent because they probably don't want MAGA fans. But at the same time, they probably don't realize really what they're doing. They probably don't realize they're marketing. And the people who are angry about them saying that also probably don't realize that they're marketing. Green Day is doing fandom maintenance so that there is an other to rail against. MAGA doing the same thing. It's, it's, it's all about like shibboleths and brands and what's acceptable with my group that isn't in yours. It's separation. We have all of these fandoms and groups that feel like togetherness, but they are really built on the idea of creating a difference between yourself and someone else. Even the combining of the extremes like MAGA communism is ultimately about carving out an extremely unique, hey, I'm both MAGA and communist thing that almost no one is. And this is where you can really see how marketing, how PR, how Edward Bernays' methodology of spreading the word has really taken over. I talked about this in uh, my documentary called Marks for Sale. Go watch that after this. But the unique selling point 
is the primary thing that people are trying to put out there about themselves. The thing that separates what I'm doing from what all the other people are doing. You got to define it and put it front and center so everybody sees that first and sticks around. And what I'm wanting to talk about here is how us as a society moving to the next stage, uh, the next stage of production specifically, the way that uh, material resources and needs are are produced and appropriated, uh, the relationships of power. Uh, if we want to change any of that stuff, we have to stop doing that, the unique selling point, the finding how we are separate from them. And that's going to be tough because I've been saying pretty similar shit about this for over a decade now, and people just seem to think that I'm driven by personal vendetta and anger. It's because they're locked into that mindset and they're viewing what I'm saying through the lens of I'm declaring my unique selling point so that others understand why I'm different and worthy of being watched. Uh, but it's actually just me making a very simple request. Stop separating yourself from other people using words, language, aesthetic, etc. And start trying to find what you have in common with someone else. And no, that doesn't mean you have to become a bigot. But it does mean you have to remember that bigots are people and they think the things that they think for a reason. Even if it's not a good reason, there is a reason. If you start thinking of them as people with lives, wants, needs, you can start seeing how uh, the idea of bigotry actually conflicts with their wants and needs. Maybe someday you can point that out to them. Maybe someday you won't be able to. I don't know. But I can tell you that all of the difference finding, the unique selling point identification, the separation perfected, if you continue engaging in that, nothing will change. And that doesn't mean just combine two, because all that does is create a really small subsection of people that think that they're better than everybody else because they've combined those two things. Am I talking about MAGA communists or am I talking about LGBTQ? Oh, you'll never know. Like and subscribe. Thank you very much.